Hello everybody, Mike Hoffman here with another video exclusive for Tip Squirrel at www.tipsquirrel.com. For great Photoshop and Lightroom tips and tutorials, follow at Tip Squirrel on Twitter or Facebook.com slash Tip Squirrel. Whether you want to watermark your images or just add a tasteful signature for an artistic touch, there are several ways to accomplish this. In today's tutorial, We'll look at two ways in Photoshop to create a signature that can be applied over and over. One method using Photoshop's brushes and the second using Photoshop's vector shapes. Either way, we'll need to start with an image of the signature you intend to use. I recommend signing with a Wacom tablet if you have one. If you don't, simply sign in black ink on a white sheet of paper and scan this into a file. Whether into Photoshop directly or into a separate file. When you scan, in order to ease your Photoshop workflow, consider scanning into grayscale or converting your image to grayscale as soon as you open it in Photoshop. Here we'll use the signature that I've already scanned. I've used a relatively high resolution of 600 dpi when scanning the file and this gives us a cropped image size of about 2000 pixels. We're going to create a brush using this image but do keep in mind, if you're using Photoshop CS6, as I am here, the brush can be up to 5,000 pixels on a side, whereas in previous versions, the maximum dimension must be 2,500 pixels or less. If you try to create a brush from a larger image, it will produce an error. So use image, image size, and adjust the size as required to make sure you're within the limits depending on your own version of Photoshop. In this case, we've got a 2000 pixel image and that's plenty large enough for our purposes. Now the next thing to keep in mind is we want to make this image as sharp as possible. Using a sampled image as a brush, the black areas of ink represent where color will be applied and the white areas will not get any color. However, shades of gray will be partially transparent. Now this is okay for the ends of strokes and serifs, but in general, we're going to want this to be as close to black and white as possible. To accomplish that, we'll press Command L on a Mac or Control L on Windows to bring up the Levels command. Adjust the white and black sliders, the black sliders to make the text darker, and the white sliders to drive the background to pure white. We want to make sure that we are as close to true black and white as possible. Now in order to define the brush, we need to have a selection. Now since we've already cropped this image to the right size, we can press Command A on a Mac or Control A on Windows to select all. And now we're ready to define the brush preset. We do that by simply choosing Edit Define Brush Preset. And we can give it a name and we'll call this one signature and click on OK. Now once we've done that we can deselect by pressing Control D on Windows or Command D on a Mac. Now we'll go to an image in which we want to place our signature and once we do we can go to the brush presets panel by choosing Window Brush Presets and if we choose the brush tool at the bottom of the brush presets panel we should find our brush preset and we click on it, we can see immediately that the cursor takes on the shape of our signature brush. Now once we've chosen the brush, we can choose a different foreground color by pressing the color picker over here on the left. In this case, we'll choose white because I think that will contrast best in this image. Now while we're hovering over the image, we can use the left and right square bracket keys to make our brush smaller and larger just like any other brush. And here is where it is very important for brushes to start with a very large size brush to begin with. Making a brush smaller using the bracket keys will tend to increase its sharpness but if you start with a small sampled brush and enlarge it at some point it will start to get fuzzy and distorted. So start with a big brush and downsize it as necessary for your image. Click once to plant the signature, and there we have it. Don't drag. Dragging will create a multiple image stroke, and that's not what we want in this case. A single click 
is the right way to apply the signature brush. And I also recommend applying this on a separate layer as I've done here. Then we can choose the move command and actually position the signature. We can resize it and even change the opacity as desired after we've placed the signature on the image. Now the second way to create a signature is by using Photoshop's vector shapes. Now we're going to use another layer in this image, one in which I've signed directly into the computer using a Wacom pen and tablet. And so I've signed right onto this layer using black ink and as a result I've got smoother strokes that are better off if we tried to convert to a path. And a path is what we're going to need to create a shape. So to get a shape we'll start with a selection and we'll convert the selection to a path. Now we want to select the black areas only and while you could make an attempt with the quick select tool or the magic wand a far easier way since the image is already in grayscale is to just go over to the channels panel. We can command click on a Mac or control click on a PC right on the channel thumbnail. If you've got an RGB image this will be the RGB channel. In this case with grayscale we only have one channel. And this loads the channel as a selection. Now we'll need to make a slight change though. Keep in mind that the white area defines a selection and the black area defines what is not selected. Just the opposite of what we need. Notice the marching ants around the perimeter of the drawing. That's because the white area is selected. So with this selection active, we'll want to go to the select command and choose inverse, which is shift control I on Windows or shift command I on a Mac. And that will invert the selection. And now we've got just the black areas selected. At this point, we can switch to the paths panel. We need a path to create a custom shape and we'll create one with this icon right at the bottom of the paths panel. This is the icon to make a work path from a selection. Clicking that creates a new path and it's called by default work path. Now make sure that path is selected and then choose edit define custom shape. Now again we'll have the opportunity here to name this shape and we'll call it signature. Pressing OK completes the task and our custom shape is ready. Now let's switch to the image that we want to sign with this shape. Now to use the new shape we need to select the custom shape tool and it's located here in this flyout menu at the very bottom custom shape tool and now we'll open the shape drop down list and our new shape should be at the very bottom of this list and there it is right there you can see it's called signature. We click the shape and then we'll move this panel out of the way and hover over the image. To create the shape we need to drag it out to the size that we want. As you're dragging you can see the shape form but be sure to hold the shift key down to constrain the proportions so that you don't stretch or distort your signature. Once you let go you'll find if you look at the layers panel that we've created a new vector layer. Now in earlier versions of Photoshop prior to CS6 this would have been a shape layer. Now in Photoshop CS6 we can change the color of the shape here and even give it a stroke by choosing the colors here or by using the color picker if we desire. In this case we'll give it a nice pink color and then when we deselect the layer we can see the signature right here. Now we could give it a stroke as well if we wanted to using the strokes drop down in older versions of Photoshop, you don't have strokes on shapes, but you can still add a stroke layer style if you really wanted to have a stroke on your signature. Now here you have two ways to add your signatures to an image. Brushes are a little easier to use and require a single click to apply, but vector shapes are more versatile and they can be scaled up or down to any size without worry about distortion or loss of resolution. Choose the one that's best for you or create both and have them at the ready to suit any need. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. 
you'll find a variety of photography, Photoshop, and Lightroom tutorials and related information there. Or you can follow me at mhoffman2001 on Twitter, and you can find me on Google Plus by simply going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial on TipSquirrel.